Welcome, welcome to I'm Loving Life podcast with A&T Mechanical, Heat and Air Plumbing. And we just soloed today, homie. Yep. Just has Tim, Trimble, the new, you know. The new oh, hats, the, the new merch. Let's go. Buy them everywhere where hats are sold. Yeah, we got some merch. It's like you a know? Las Vegas uh, Raiders kind of vibe, uh, you know? That sucks. What? I want that Dallas Cowboy feel. No, no. that's It's America's boring. team, bro. They're terrible. Like so I, what? Yeah, but I wish, like, I genuinely wish the Cowboys were good. I know. Especially if you spend that much money. It would be so good for football and just sports and just morale of the nation. The, if, I'm telling you, it would change. Like, oh, they deserve yeah, it. They've been it waiting would, for 20,000 years. Dude, it would be the biggest story. I, yeah. I don't, I don't really – well, I like the Broncos. That's kind of my team. I don't think they're going to change until Jerry Jones kicks you think so? out of there. Hmm. Yeah, because he tries to – I don't know. I'm not a big football guy. only reason I watch football fantasy? is because fantasy, and I am awful at it. So, uh, I don't know. I think I, Joseph usually auto-drafts, so that's usually – No, I don't. <laughs> he pays attention half the time, you know. No, I, I, dra- I try to be better, but, mm-hmm. like, I don't remember anybody's name. So, me knowing that the running back is getting hurt this mm-hmm. week, that I should get the backup one, is not even on my radar. Yeah. If I had that much time to actually focus on it, then maybe it'd be a little better. But I don't know. I still fit in like basketball is my favorite, and that's every day. Every day, setting your lineups, looking for injuries, who's going to get bad. But you also get up at like two in the morning. Well, still, it's just, you know, You're like, just I'm takes... bored. Let's just go through no, this. No, it just takes five, 10 minutes. You know? I, I just don't deal. understand how your brain don't shut off. Oh. Well, it's just part of it, you know, no. mental delusion. Let's use the part of it. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, my head hits the pillow. It takes me three seconds to really? walk out or less. Um, I wish I had that problem, man. I, I'm or telling you, problem. I just put my head down and pillow that, and it's out. Mm. No questions, no concerns. But there's sometimes though, what happens is in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. if I wake up, then it won't shut off because I'm thinking of a problem that happened with yeah. business. So, Everybody knows ain't mechanical business for every business is hard. There's no questions around it. That's why businesses fail in the first five years is because once it gets hard, they back away from it and go to their, you know, back to their cocoon and say, I will just work for this person. Uh-huh. But, you know, for my dad to be doing it for over 45 years and we're going to keep going, it's when your back's against the wall, and I think Mike Mike Madrid's really good at it too, and that's why I think he's a real good part of our plumbing company, is that's when we feel like we're in the a safe space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like our back's against the wall. We have to fight to get out of here. You have a, a moment of calmness, and it's crazy to think that way, but that's reality as a business owner because the easy stuff is easy. Like going through the summer, you can, you're going to get business. It's these when the times dip or that seasonal dip that the people are like well i can't do it anymore no that's when you shine mm-hmm. and if you can't feel that the stress and take care of that that part you'll never be a business owner because i don't know of any business that doesn't go through hard times mm-hmm. i mean do you know of anyone that would i guess maybe owning vending machines i think like the well what I noticed when I worked at McKesson, I was there for eight years, biggest pharmaceutical company that no one's ever heard of. But I remember I didn't really feel the seasons when you're in that corporate environment. You you don't really have a huge impact on like day to day, right? There's other people way more qualified, way higher paid. And there's like, a, it's basically a machine at this point, And they're worried about the stock dip from bad press they're not worried about oh we're gonna shut the doors you know so i think whenever i stepped out of that and first got into sales that's when i first realized like oh people are very seasonal with when they do things when they buy and so i think getting back into this spot it's like it's very eye-opening it is because you can't plan ideally i used to think my brain used to work in okay we plan a year out everything's set We execute by the quarter and we're hitting our metrics. That's what it is. But you have to learn how to pivot and be able to adjust to whatever wild card gets thrown your way. And then it's like, okay, well, there's no playbook for this. So we have to figure it out. And then your solution might be a little different from somebody else. Yeah. And the thing is like everybody goes through it and whatever they say, 
but it's like what what separates you to keep the door running because mm-hmm. i mean it's got to be you have to be a dog i mean you have to be able to fight for what you want to believe in and it's 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 hard but that that dip that you're like man and that's the thing why we you know brought in plumbing the beginning is because it would help in that slow time that's when plumbing starts to gear up and start mm-hmm. running but we've been blessed with what we have right so i i don't know it's it's going to be interesting that's why i'm still thinking about being like elect- getting an electrician in here mm-hmm. there's there's too many benefits to have more big a bigger piece of the pie for someone's home yeah that they can call and say i got you mm-hmm. i mean we just uh got off the phone a guy that's heat and air uh, that's a builder, he's more comfortable dealing with just me and getting both done than having another contractor, right. another contractor. He just call me direct and be like, get this done. One point of contact. Right. It's so much easier, but to have three in that, it's like a, it's a game changer for us. If that happens, I don't know when, but that's what the gateway of the Generac was. That's the whole purpose. We started it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this it's crazy business like that. Yeah. Shoot, I think it was like three three weeks ago. It was like a Friday. I just went home and cried. Like I was like, "Golly, the stress!" Oh, it was yeah. when we were, when we were that one Friday. We looked at the board and, we're and like, there was nothing on there. Yeah, we're like, "Holy cow, this is crazy!" <laughs> and you, you, but that's why you try to have stuff in place. And when you you get to, man, it's so much easier as a business owner. You have eight guys. And you have service that you can service all day. So you don't have to have an install, but you service and then you have an install. So that kind of mm-hmm. takes about three guys and it's da da da. Mm-hmm. It's very easy and it's a great business model. But then you start adding 45, 48 mm-hmm. people that Monday. You don't have anything. Yeah. It's, it's an eye opening thing. Cause that's, that's somebody's food on the table that we're missing. Mm-hmm. So, but as our team, we all, rallied together started moving things and we've been staying busy now that's why we went to the fair i mean luckily we had the fair yeah but god yeah it's, oh my god yeah the the fair was intense for sure because it and we were talking about this earlier but it varies per day the total crowd changes you know they kind of they will I guess relate or maybe react to something different. So you had to switch it up all the time, you know? One of the contractors I talked to about it, he says, well, usually a lot of people say everything slows down in the fair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it does. Mm -hmm. But we put ourselves in the position to go capitalize capitalize on that slow time. And I think, I mean, so far we haven't even scratched the surface of what we've done. It's only been, what is that? Four, three days yeah, since the since fair, the and we've already had two installs and maybe five hot water tanks. Five, five HVAC installs and two hot water tanks. I mean, that's great for right now, especially when everybody's like, "Well, the fair was down thirty percent, and you know everything slows down." Well, we put ourselves in a position to be able to capitalize on it, and we've done it. I mean, we paid booth rent. That's a that's a positive, yeah. and it just. Would I do I want to do it again? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. It sucks because we do it different than everyone else. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to advertise a home and garden show, whatever, you have to have a hook for kids, or you have to have a hook for a person to drop a wall down in one second. Mm-hmm. It's not like sit on the box and hope they come up to you. It's not gonna. It's not gonna benefit anybody mm-hmm. while you're there. For A and T, we have a hook, we have a game plan, and we every time we've done something, we capitalize on it because of how much effort we put into it. Mm-hmm. Granted, everyone's hurt. You all our batteries are dead, yeah. but look at the outcome that's gonna happen for us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, in the next month, month yeah. and a half. So well, that's the positive side. Whenever you actually track ROI, you track your numbers, then that kind of validates the decision that you made. Right. You know, based on the tracking. And I, I think a lot of people don't do that, don't track, you know? And for me, it's like, uh, if you don't track in then how do you know where you're gonna spend your effort in, your time, right. your money? Like, where do you allocate that if you're not tracking it right you know 
But. Well, not only that is like we have a good we have a good friend that was on here, Jolly Goat. Mm-hmm. That man tracks his stuff to the T. Oh yeah, way. But I mean, I'm not saying we're we do, but we we do ours. Yes, mm-hmm. but his is to like the decimal, mm-hmm. decimal, decimal, and he's saying he's down. Mm-hmm. But what would he've been if he didn't do it, mm-hmm. right? And the, and that's the flip side of the coin, right? And for. Me, I have to think of everything positive because we were in the, I think, the worst spot we possibly have ever could have been in because we've worked the Bennett Center forever. Yeah. And we were worst booth location for sure. We were in this tunnel and we still produce what we're producing now. Yeah. It's the effort. Well, yeah. We had like, was it like 10 foot walls basically on each side? You know, and yours in this tunnel. Mm-hmm. And it was, it, we couldn't have done it without everyone that helped mm-hmm. because. Your mental state in each day, you're there, you're grinding, and then you go, crap, I got to go back another day. Mm-hmm. Mike Madrid, I mean, he worked more days than probably everyone, mm-hmm. and he was still on point. Like, and I got to give the man a heads down. I mean, that's. Yeah. Because it was he, nuts. He ended up working all day, well, Saturday. Yeah. All day Saturday. I came in the evening, and then we closed that night, too. And Saturday, Friday and Saturday were 10 o'clock. Right, because the other thing the state fair does is they actually fine you if yep. you leave your booth early. Uh, so that's the thing, and then also you can also risk the chance of not getting an invitation again because they're not they're not lacking people that want to be there. Right, right. They only accept ten percent new people every. But year. we weren't even going to go in there. We got it denied. Right. right. Yeah, we. I put in the application in January, and we got the rejection email. I think in February, and then. We got an email in June um, that said that, hey, there's last minute spots opened up. You guys are in. Here's your booth spot. You know, and obviously we didn't get the picket. And then it was like, I remember talking to Jessica. I was like, hey, uh, so we're working the fair this year. Right. Now we have to get everything figured out of what that actually looks like. You know, right. and I think it I think it was good to run two people at a time for the most part just because it took so much more energy to do it, especially with the booth location and everything like that. That way you could actually keep people hundred percent, you yep. know, cause I, I don't think it would have been the same if we were trying to run more people in more days, just cause you get, I mean, I'm at Saturday, Saturday. I was, I was like done. I was yep. like, I don't, I don't think I ever want to come to the fair. You I, know? I agree. <laughs> just, that's my, honest. You your know? feet hurt. And and it's a different crowd. Mm -hmm. The crowd is there to be at the fair, not to talk to heat and air company. Mm -hmm. They're there for a corn dog and a turkey leg or whatever. I would say fried Twinkies, but it it eats your own. But I'm just saying they're not going there to talk to heat and air company. They did Mm -hmm. because we sucked them in. I mean, it was amazing to see people come down. They couldn't even find us at first. They're like, I looked all over this place to find you guys just to get a cape, mm-hmm. a cape, a what is that? A dollar fifty capes to seventeen to come see us just for a cape. Yeah. I, we had a whole band mm-hmm. have all our capes on mm-hmm. while they're walking through the fair. Talk about the advertisement. Yeah, talk about just like kids being excited because they're superheroes. It was it's mm-hmm. that feeling, and hopefully, the return on investments what we're looking for at, that's the whole point of us yeah. giving out i don't know how many capes we gave out four thousand uh two two thousand thousand capes two thousand capes. We, i think we are two, out by friday two thousand mm-hmm. kids are wearing our cape yeah. i wonder how many people are going to wear them for halloween oh yeah you know what i'm saying like there's so much potential with that and i think that's probably the best thing that we yeah. bring out there because we gave 2,000 capes and 1,000 whoopee cushions. That's too. insane. Mm-hmm. That have our logo on it. You know, the candy's great because you can bring them in, mm-hmm. but the candy's going to be eaten and thrown away. Mm-hmm. To give them that cape and stuff is just awesome. Yeah. But like even the people that were working there, the vendors were like, hey, I'm going to tell the kids to find you on 1726, mm-hmm. where our booth was, because we had an interaction with her. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I mean, granted, Mike's probably hitting on her. Not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Mike's throw Mike around the bus. No. <laughs> like, I think it was me, Mike. Who else was there? 
I want to say Tony was there, but all three guys were there and she was just loving it. Cause we're like, Hey, what you doing? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. But I mean, you could have made a commer- uh, TV show out of the fair with mm-hmm. us because well, there's I, so much. Well, we actually much. had um, Mike and I, I think it was Friday night, someone came up to us and saw the costume. Mike didn't even have it on, the hot water tank costume. And uh, he said, oh, I actually saw that on TikTok. You know? And he's That's like, cool. I was looking for it. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. You know? That's but you know how awesome. many people have came and said how much they loved our commercials too? Mm-hmm. That kind of just validates what we've been doing, Mm -hmm. and it's rememberable. I mean, to the point that, I mean, the new one just dropped. (laughs) It should be live on the stations probably tomorrow thing, because I sent them off yesterday. So, the still, the the new commercial is so amazing. Um, Just the concept of it and what we got to do with it. I, I, I mean, you and Andre, the vision and the execution, I think y'all killed it. Well, Andre, a hundred percent, like um, scripted that yeah. whole thing shot by shot. So that was that was something. He had a particular thing in mind that he was looking for. He's like, hey, do it. Like, you know, that's. I mean, it was hands down. That's. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was great. It's it's different than what we've done, mm-hmm. but I actually had two shooting locations. Really cool, and they're kind of they're not just public areas either. Yeah. We got permission. And um, some of that actually came from the Feel the Love segment on Something Good from Channel 9 because people yeah. saw it. You know, so people are willing to help out. Right. You know? So that that's that's always super cool. But just to be able to accomplish that and be able to have people come to the fair and go, man, I love your commercials. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all are those people on the commercial. It's, it's really good feeling. My son would be like, you're famous, mm-hmm. you know. Anything he thinks he's famous from the Willy Wonka thing. Oh yeah, yeah. he's like, yeah, I'm famous because I'm <laughs> on the commercial. Yeah, I'm just saying it's it's really awesome to see that mm-hmm. transition and stuff. But we have some really good stuff that we're gonna drop too. Yeah, I think uh, since October we got Halloween coming up. We'll probably have at least two. We'll do some more little Halloween skits, but probably two kind of like productions basically. Right. And then after that we roll into the Christmas season. So. There's we have cool uh, I think ideas you know on the docket for that too yeah. so I think it'd be a good one. I'm just just dropping. I hope it's like that Folger one. So yeah, yeah, that one's it. That's that's, it. that's the plan. But so you have to tune straight in out that. Joseph's mind two o'clock in the morning. You know? I know that was that was pretty <laughs> crazy. But if it you know people execute it differently, but at least we have an idea to start with. Mm-hmm. But it's just a concept. Yeah. But it's so I run like the commercial loop on the TV. And so many people notice it, but also it's good to sit there and actually look at it because you can see the difference on it, the progression on it, just just getting better. You imagine it. if Andre was there and we did the Willy Wonka one. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, like, it looks so much better. But. What level that would have been. But that was still great. That was still a great commercial. Uh, I, he did great, but just imagine the actual, like, how deeper we could have got with mm-hmm. the creativity with it instead yeah. of, like, on the spot, you know? Yeah. Well, that's special how effects we used in it. To shoot those commercials too. It was always we have a general idea. You build whatever props it is for it, and then we're getting everything ready the day of. Right. You know that's how it used to be. Now there's actually a lot more planning on it. There's a lot more discussion that goes into it. And Andre and I have been talking about this too. Um, we kind of understand why the TV local TV stations go with template shots. So template shots. There's no cinematic kind of angle on it you're not really zooming in or shooting for effect or anything like that it was just straight up pick Block. video 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 you combine the three together you put your banners on the bottom and it makes sense i understand why they do it because they don't have a lot of time to work on it the people they usually the businesses usually don't have their own ideas you no. know or their own scripts or anything so they're having to prep these people and also you're working with their time schedule too and those people aren't really allocating enough time to dive into it you know as oh well. yeah but that's just part of it i mean if you do do advertising i mean we we mark has probably been the best one to begin with and th- now we have some really other good partners with us like five and nine and stuff like that until 
Who's the Tyler, Tyler Drake, Media? Drake I mean, Tyler Media. I mean, great. there's some really good guys, but you got to know what you're about to do. Mm-hmm. Like, if you only have a thousand dollars, what does that look like? Because if we we used to only have a thousand dollars a month, well, us we're like, oh, okay, we want in this section. Now we grown the budget a little bit, but the reality is, is we're still very precise in what you do. Because man, you could run one commercial on Saturday night, and that thousand dollars is gone. Well, there was, um, I especially if you over, have a rep that sucks. Yeah. Well, I got sent over a spot for the OU. Actually, it was this OU Tennessee game, and I saw it. I was like, ten grand, ten grand for one spot. Holy cow! <laughs> you better be talking to Toyota or something. Yeah, because that's, that's not happening. Yeah, for one spot, you know. But I mean, realistically, if you like, so we did the Olympics last year. Two, one is two, two years ago. ago. Mm-hmm. It was was it like. $12,000? Something crazy. It was something stupid. But we thought, oh, people are going to watch it. But if we put that 12000 through the whole year, mm-hmm. we had more eyeballs on it than that w- yeah. two weeks as we got nothing Frequency from the Olympics. Frequency is definitely more the key because they, they have to see her. I think the target frequency is like seven typically for an ad to be served. Right. I mean, that – because the thing is, uh, like – so us, right, we all we think the business, everything like that, and it's the most important thing. Well, when you look at it from the perspective like consumer, it's just another company. Yeah. Like they're not caring day to day with how busy you are or whatever it is. Like there are people who aren't thinking about that. Right. And you shouldn't. Like that's not what your life is about. No. Um, so being able to balance, I think, those two and, and be like, well, it's not all like we're not really the paramount thing here. Right. You know? And then be able to balance that. I think that helps out a lot. Well, that's that's why we didn't get like. I mean, you didn't come back as a heat and air. I mean, you're not a heat and air background. Mm-hmm. Andre's not from a heat and air background, so it gives you a different perspective. When you, like I understand heat and air, I'm like, oh, let's talk about this compression, da da da, and you're like, they don't know any care. care about it. Yeah. What, what do we? What, the goal is to show that we're a company that actually cares or whatever. Mm-hmm. Fun company. Doesn't matter, but that's the mind change that helps when you have somebody that's outside that box. Mm-hmm. I think transparency. Just like too, Mike. Yeah. Well, I think it helps too, to be able to shoot content that's actually transparent as well, because you know, one thing you'll hear is, well, we don't want to show people how to do this because we want them to call us. Okay. I understand that. But who is your actual target, you know, demographic? It's someone that wants to pay you for you to do it. Right. So that doesn't matter. They can look up anything. If they really wanted to do it, they could figure it out. Yes, there's licenses involved and stuff like that. But really, most of the things you can go to YouTube and learn the basics and stuff. If you're that kind of person, that is fine. But you're not our our demographic. No. You're not our customer. And that's okay. Yeah. You know? I just, if you can't do it, just... Yeah, it's gonna Remember be a lot us. easier. It's gonna be a lot easier. Just call us, please. It's like, a lot easier. But yeah, warranty. You don't have warranty issues. Like everything's gonna be done right. You know, so less headache. Just call us and make it easier on yourself. But the aftermath really is like, yeah, it's great. It's in da da da. But where are you gonna? Who's gonna be there two years from now or four years from now when it's messed up? Because all these big corporations have already sold out. Yeah. And. I mean, we're still here. I mean, that's why he's built the business. My dad has built the business. Is He wants to be that company that mm-hmm. Oklahoma can count on. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And me and Jessica live by that. Yeah. No, I think um, I told you I ran to the Colby Yarborough, right? Oh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago. But it seems like they have a very similar mindset just from talking yeah. to him. So that's something I really, I actually really enjoy talking to him about that. Right. Know? There's some really good companies out there that are on the same game plan as us. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not the only one doing this. We're just trying to be more noticeable than everyone else. And mm-hmm. that's why I hopefully we're more successful than the big corporations. But I mean, there's some really good mom and pop ones that. Or maybe two trucks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to us. And the thing is, is like we, A&T, anybody, uh, you you can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm always willing to help that little guy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they have one truck or ten trucks. And most of because I got that happen to me. So I'm 100% ready to give it back. Because the more you give back, 
it's, yeah, it's well worth more it. that giver kind of mindset paying it forward you know right. kind of deal because you never want to be that cutthroat and you can sense that typically if you're around other contractors right. and they don't want to like talk to you and stuff you're like oh that sucks you have that mindset that's right. unfortunate because we could be really good friends you right know? i think the owens people across the booth from us were great like oh, they yeah. came over and talked there's a couple <laughs> technicians that came there's that one yeah. one technician came over and talked like multiple times um but i thought they were great you know so in in the at the fair right across the way we could see them they had Owens heat and air. They had their septic thing. I mean, right across, like you couldn't miss them. Yeah. But you could miss us a hundred percent. Double the boot size. Oh yeah. You know. But was, I think how I, yeah, I'm not in there or anything, but I can imagine that we also perform better with how we actually worked it too. Oh yeah. Cause a lot of times they'd have one guy there. They're just sitting, you know, or two people there and they're just sitting there waiting yeah. for someone to come up. But I'm saying, like, I don't mind that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, if I have a septic problem, I'll use them. Because mm-hmm. um, we don't do septic. We don't do septic. Yeah. But hey, it, it is what it is. Because we had a couple people come up and ask us about lateral lines. I was like, no, no, go over there. Yeah, they'll <laughs> like, take care of that. Yeah, they, they'll take care of that over there. So right. That's not in our wheelhouse. Can we talk about the the wager, the gentleman wager oh, that yeah. we had over the OU Tennessee game? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was the spread? Six and a half, you know, something. And Joseph, for some reason, you know, was like, oh, yeah, oh, he's going to win. And I don't want to be that guy. But let's also be realistic about the oh, OU offense, okay? They cannot run the ball. You don't have Jackson my money. You don't have to talk, it, you don't have to talk about it. Tennessee is good. And they have a good defense. Oh, you has a good defense OU too. Oh, dollar. But do you see the clip where Josh Heupel was talking to his quarterback and said that he was he didn't uh, he was pulling his punches in the second half play calling? Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, there's a there's a clip. He's covering his mouth, but the camera's right there and it caught it. And he told his quarterback that he was pulling punches because he didn't want to you know overdo it. Uh, with OU since that's his own, own ma- no way yes I've seen the clip like four he's times he's like don't don't throw it no, down this there this is after the game and he said hey I'll just you know I was pulling I was pulling my punches with the play calling being really conservative at the end because I didn't want to blow him out and embarrass him that's literally what he said yeah there's a oh. clip that shows that okay so <laughs> no th- let, let's let's talk about it real quick so <laughs> Tim's like he's never had he never bet with the spread. So I was like, I'll take the spread. Because mm-hmm. it gave me a reason to watch the game. Mm. Granted, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. So I lost 20 bucks. Well, I would like to point out that I was very, also very graceful. I wasn't hounding you. With oh, it, I, you know? would, you I didn't even say anything. I literally brought it up just now. Okay. I for, totally forgot about it. Because <laughs> so I was really going to text you, but I was like, no. Nah, you should have. I'll hold on to it. It's fine. We'll talk yeah, about yeah. this week. Yeah, on the podcast. So <laughs> I lost $20. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, bet with Joseph and uh, you'll win some money. Wow. You win one time. <laughs> this guy now, rides on a horse and he rides more. on a horse. I'm going to do it more. <laughs> Holy cow. Anyway. <laughs> all right. It. At the end of the day, love and life. Love life. Thank you.